Hello and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sport. And today we're going to be talking about the South Africa versus Ireland match and the backlash we have seen on social media, in the media, for example, towards the referee and the referee team. As well as basically, what is the situation when it comes to, to officials and, and how are we going to get this right? How are we going to keep improving on making sure we get to a situation where match officials, for example, get the respect that they deserve and that they're um, that they earned, but also that we get to a situation where there's so much more clarity in regards to what rules are, laws are, for example, that fans know what's going on as well. Because I think a lot of the criticism I've seen, some of it comes to a simple misunderstanding of actually the laws itself. And and that's not to take a criticism of, of all the fans. I'm not saying that every single fan that criticizes the referee doesn't understand the laws, because a lot of them do very, very well as well. But I think that sometimes in the heat of the moment, we get very caught up with certain decisions. Sometimes we, we ref, ref, people are even referencing old laws, for example, and it becomes very difficult to keep up with what the current laws are, what the current protocols are as well, how the officials are officiating, and uh, you know how that lines up with what we see on the TV. So before we do that, please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Right, so yesterday in the hot seat, Loftus, it was referee Luke Pierce who was assisted by Carl Dixon and Mike Adamson. The television match official was Ben Whitehouse, a very, very experienced uh, refereeing team. I mean, Luke Pierce is one of the top refs in the world. Uh, he really is. Just 36 years old. Um, you know, he's not been around um, a, a long time, but um, he's been refereeing at test matches, I think, for like almost a decade. Um, so not in terms of like, not saying he's not been around long now. I'm not saying he's not been around for a long time as in like he's, you know, two, three years into this, but, um, you know, he's not in his 40s, 50s, you know, he is very much um, still relatively young, um, but he's been involved in some massive, massive games, and um, I think that he is one of the best referees in the world. I've always enjoyed him. I think his communication is really good. Um, I think that um, his explanations are usually very good, and I think that's very, very good when it comes to referee. I always look at referees and I sit there saying, you know, first of all, obviously you got to judge the decision making and how they make the decisions and the consistency. But I also think that when it comes to, um, you know, making uh, the calls and explaining the calls, you've got to be very precise. You've got to explain yourself very well. You've got to communicate very well to the players. And I've always felt he is a referee that does that. Uh, funny enough, he wasn't supposed to be the referee. Angus Gardner was supposed to appreciate the first test. Um, but pulled out due to personal reasons as a result, Luke Pierce stepped in. Now let's talk about <coughs> the controversial cause. The TMO getting involved, and that's the big one, isn't it? So in fact, I mean, in many ways, it's Ben Whitehouse, who's, who's almost under the microscope as much as Luke Pierce. Now the big TMO cause um, were the, sort of held up under the line for Springboks, for example, that decision, the, the two big ones though, were the two James Lowe decisions, wasn't it? One was the James Lowe try, which was disallowed, it wasn't actually a decision on him. The other one was the try that Safka scored. Now, it is quite a big swing, isn't it? When you consider if it's a converted try, for example, that's a 14-point swing. That's the difference of the game. Um, so the first big call was the foot in the ruck that um, moved the ball backwards, which saw the ball pop back to the iron side. They counterattacked. They scored. Now, it was a very messy ruck, wasn't it? And there is a boot. I think it's Ken Healy. It is, uh, that, that moves the ball back, and he's not on his feet. Now, a lot of people are saying, you know, how could he possibly know he's doing that? First of all, it doesn't matter if he knows he's doing it or not. The rule is you cannot play the ball on the ground with your feet in the ruck. And that was something actually yesterday that was really um, penalized a lot, actually. I thought it was actually quite interesting to see that across the different matches, if you watched a lot of the different international matches yesterday, you would have noticed that referees are really clamping down on players who come through the breakdown and as they're in the breakdown, are sort of kicking the ball or moving the ball with their foot, for example, because you saw that a lot in previous games, which in previous years, which they got away with. So that is something they're very much stamping down. You may not touch the ball once you're off your feet, basically. And that includes sort of a, a, a foot that might not even be, you know, you might not even know where it's happening. It doesn't matter. It's illegal. And that is why that trial was disallowed. Um, sounds harsh. It is the law. The next one is the um, the James Lowe in touch decision, which is, which is uh, causing a lot of, of chaos. I think it's a 50-50 call, to be perfectly honest. I don't think you can definitively say he was out. I don't think you can definitively say he wasn't out. Um, I think that um, Luke Pierce said the on-field decision was a try, as far as what they saw. There's officials, I don't know if it was Carl Dixon or Mike Adamson on that side, as well as Luke Pierce. They said that they reckon it was kept inside. From that, the protocol is the TMO, Ben Whitehouse, has to find proof, 
evidence, clear and obvious evidence that he is definitely out. And the two TV angles we saw don't allow that. The one TV angle shows him when he touches the ground and you can see the ball, but because his hand's behind the ball, you actually don't know if there's if his hand's on the ball or not. And unfortunately, we could not um, sync that up with different frames from a different angle because then his body was blocking where the ball was coming from. So it is marginal. I mean, you're talking about literal frames. Um, and I don't think that you could, as I said, definitively say he was definitely out. So I think that's a decision. It's a 50-50, for example. I think the on-field decision makes the big call there. The fact that they say on-field decision is a try. I've always been a big advocate of try or no try. You know, I do think there's a certain amount of, yes, the referee can see and, and they've got a gut feeling. But I also think that, you know, we've seen a lot of things which, you know, we think probably if it was called the other way, they would stick with the referee decision. And I've always sort of understood that uh, they want to try and protect the referee decisions. I'm not a massive fan of that. I think a simple try or no try. Timo, what do you reckon? Because of the referee, you just say, listen, I don't have a good view. You know, I'm basically guessing you. You know, um, so that's what the team is, is for, isn't it? You know, when, if the referee's like, oh, I'm not so sure, what do you reckon? Um, I don't like the fact that they then say, I think it's a try. And all of a sudden, the team has to go and actively look for a reason not to award the try in order to actually over, to overturn that, for example. Um, so I think that's, again, a protocol thing, which we need to maybe look at and be interested to see the review. Um, what's also very interesting, by the way, is that the TMO is allowed to intervene at any time. And in terms of um, plays, you can basically go from the change of position. I think that was what basically like paper was saying. You know, previously you could only look back like two or three phases in terms of the buildup of a try to disallow something. Now you can basically go anywhere up to where they, they, they gain possession, even if they gain possession legally, for example, like the Iron Tribe. Uh, Luke Pierce itself is under a lot of, of, of criticism. Now, the one thing I always say is if you are being criticized from both sets of fans, that kind of alleviates the whole idea of bias. So, for example, a lot of Ireland fans have, are, have been on our videos and on social media saying, SA bought the, 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 the you know, Luke Pierce and had an extra man. And I've seen as many South African fans saying, Luke Pierce, what a terrible referee, clearly wants the Ireland to win these bloody Northern Hemisphere refs. So, when you see that sort of reaction coming from both sets of fans, for me, that removes the whole idea of him being biased, for example, because it just means that everyone felt that he was against him. And I think if you know if if you're against if he's against everyone, then he's not for someone, is he? Um, was his best game? It's difficult to say. You know, I think you've got to go through the game again. And I mean, Yaku Paper was talking about how they make tens of thousands of decisions, basically, that there are so many decisions to make um, throughout the game. Not tens of thousands, obviously, but there are like a thousand decisions apparently they basically make in that 80 minutes. Um, and obviously, like those minor infraction stuff, like again, if you were to go scrutinize every single rack, for example, every single moment, you could find so many more infringements that aren't penalized. If they were, we would never have a game. So, where I thought was very interesting was the scrum battle. Um, I think Andy Farrell put it very well, also Dusty Russell, I think, put it very well. And we talked about the technical side of the scrum. He said there wasn't more power, there were some technical issues. Um, and I think that was, that was quite interesting. Um, I don't think there were as a horror show refereeing performance. You know, I don't look at it and think that there were forward passes missed. You know, there were clear ruck and fridges that were missed. There were clear offsides that weren't brought up, you know, and it was completely ruined by a Bryce Lawrence horrendous refereeing affair. You know, I don't think it was the case. Now, a lot of people are going to come up to me and say, oh, but you won, you know. <clears throat> of course, the staff was going to be happy with the refereeing performance when they won. And that's just one of the way it goes. Um, but I also think it's very careful. You know, we can't every single time a game finishes, spend four weeks talking about the referee. It's so tiring. I hate talking about it. I must admit, because I just think it's so unproductive. It's I'd much rather look about the attacking shape of the spring marks. How did the island defend, for example, the kick chases, the small, the fun parts of the game. I don't want to sit there scrutinizing Lupia's decision for the rest of the week. Um, but I think the reason we do this <coughs> is because the laws change so often. And we've got so many law changes. It's so difficult to keep up as a fan. I mean, if you have to sit down right now and explain to a rugby fan, this is how rugby works, and you have to give them the entire law book. In two weeks' time, you're going to have to say, listen, you remember what I told you? That's no longer the case. This is now the case. And I understand that we're trying to innovate to try and make the game better, but I do think we've got so many law changes at the moment, it's becoming so difficult to, to keep up. I mean, I saw a comment saying, you know, it was illegal for Ireland to use his foot in the rack, um, you know, but it's fine to use the foot when, when, when you know, they're, they're holding him over the trial line. And people are sitting saying, saying, well, there is a different set of laws when it comes to the trial line. Like that is a genuine thing. So it kind of shows you that, you know, a lot of people sort of understand different parts of the law book and, and stuff like that. So it's so difficult, I think, as a, as a casual fan or even as a dedicated fan, you know, we're not sitting there doing refereeing exams. You know, we know the law book to a certain extent, but we don't know exactly how it is officiated. It's one thing to sit there and say, this is the law. 
It's another thing being in a seminar saying, right, this is how you officiate that law because it, it is an element of of um, of interpretation and the picture you see, for example, and what you look for when you're applying that law is very different to what we might think, uh, which I think is a very important part of it. So, yeah, you know, I'm very keen to try and actually get a bit of a refereeing uh, 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 sort of section on the channel, not a ref bashing section. Um, you know, there's certain channels out there that just go and talk about how terrible the refs are and go and try and find every decision that they didn't make. Um, I think that's unproductive. But I'd love to get more information on how the referees actually officiate the game and give us a lens into if we're watching the match and we want to understand from a referee perspective, what should we be looking out for in terms of what they penalize, what they interpret, what they try and see. Um, I think that would be very interesting. And that's why Rassi Rasmus has brought Yako Paper. It's not about Yako Paper telling, the, telling everybody that the referee is terrible. It's about Yako Paper saying, right, when you're going for a jackal, I'm looking for this, 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 and that. And then all of a sudden, Quacker Smith says, oh, okay, so this is why I'm being penalized, for example. So if I do this, you know, you, you're going to let it go, or you're going like, to interpret that as being legal. That's kind of where the referee input comes. And that's why they work with the referee. It's not about the laws. Everyone can read the law. It's about how do they, how do they officiate the law? How do they interpret that law? What are the signs they look at um, in interpreting the law? Because you could look at a law. Somebody else could look at a law. It's the same law, but if you suddenly go and uh, and um, officiate it, you might interpret it slightly differently, or you might look for different things when it comes to that law. Um, so that's a very interesting part of it. So, what are your thoughts? And, and I'm not saying what are your thoughts in terms of you know rate the ref between one and ten. I think again, I think it's unproductive. But how do we make it simple for the fans? How do we make it accessible? And how do we make sure that the game becomes easier for the officials to officiate? Because we do need referees. You know, we can't sit there saying every single referee is useless. Because if every single referee in the world truly is useless, then the issue of the referees is the laws. And I always said that I think the laws are a bigger an issue than, than the referees are. But we've got to try and get this right. We've got to be positive about this because we've got to be proactive about it. What do you think? In the comments below, let me know. Subscribe to the channel as well. And um, we'll see how things go. Andy Farrell's come out and said that, you know, he is uh, um, looking to go to the right channels, for example, to get official feedback um, about some pictures which look dubious, for example. So, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's particularly productive. And um, the referee is going to be in, 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 in a lot of conversation the next few days. I just think we need to find out how do we prevent that? How do we make sure that we're not talking about the referee for the next few days? How are we talking about the game itself? Um, and how do we do that? Suggestions, always welcome in the comments below. And we'll see you guys soon. My name is Steve, and thank you very much for watching.